welcome back to the channel. Today's vlog is going to be a little bit more casual. This is really just going to be me talking to the camera about my biggest regrets, wins, and lessons learned as an author. Grab a drink or whatever you want and we'll get started. I guess the first regret that I have, and I've mentioned this before, but I really regret not waiting until I was a little bit older and more mature and more experienced before I self-published my first book. Now in saying that, I think it's a little bit bittersweet for me uh, because if I had waited too long to publish my first book, my mom wouldn't have seen it. Uh, so, you know, I don't want to say, oh, I wish I had waited till I was, you know, 25, 26, because that would have been too late. So this is the very first book that I self-published. Some of you may recognize it. I'm kind of hoping you don't. Okay, this is how it started and this is how it's going. So obviously it's going much better now in terms of storytelling and cover design. But when I first published this book, I was 19 and I was super stoked to publish a book at 19. And so, you know, I'm, I don't want to take that away from past me because this was a huge accomplishment for me at the time. Don't be in a hurry to hit publish. Um, I know it's really tempting because so many people out there, so many authors now, they have, um, I, I don't want to say like flash in the pan careers because a lot of them have been very successful, but there are also a number of authors out there who have taken the ubiquity of Amazon and the ease of self-publishing with Kindle Unlimited and they have made very successful careers for themselves, but it's usually at the expense of longevity and sometimes quality and when I published this book it was as good as I could make it but it wasn't the best and it's just because I wanted to get to that finish line and I didn't see how much work actually went into it so again I don't regret this specific book I don't I don't regret any of the books that led me to where I am right now right you can't get from point A to point Z without going through the whole alphabet. And I feel like that's a very fitting metaphor for the circumstances. Regret number two, I regret not having a clear and defined marketing strategy. And again, like I said two seconds ago, I think a big contributing factor to that sort of nebulous marketing strategy that I had, which was I'm a multi-genre writer. I drift between fictional universes was me not necessarily knowing who I was or what I wanted to say. I don't want to say I regret being a multi-genre author because I don't. Because believe me, when I first started writing, when this book came out back in 2010, I was convinced, oh, I'm going to be a romance author. And then I discovered that I actually really enjoy writing mystery and fantasy. And if I had limited myself so early in the game, I don't think I would have been able to write the spear catchers or the absentees or really this whole series that I'm working on, which is a whole amalgamation of different genres. But from a purely business standpoint, it sometimes hurts to be a little too widespread, a little bit too thin. And pro tip, if you know yourself, you'll probably know your audience a little bit better than if you just sort of throw your book at people and hope that one of them catches it. The third thing I regret, and this is, okay, this is actually the thing that was probably my biggest regret, but I left it to the very end because I like to procrastinate on things that make me kind of uncomfortable. Um, I regret, I regret how I left the writing community on Twitter because I left in anger and I don't like leaving in anger. It just sort of, I got to the point one day where I had enough and I said, fuck it. Uh, yeah, I said that and I wish I hadn't uh, because it was sort of contrary to the image that I have been trying to maintain of someone who is like very level headed. Um, I'm not sure if I succeeded in that, but I do regret that. I regret it because I made a lot of amazing friends in that community and I feel like I just sort of walked away from it. And Granted, it had changed quite a bit, and as I've said in previous videos, there were too many issues, too many controversies, too many fault lines that I didn't want to negotiate anymore. Uh, but that being said, I really shouldn't have stormed off, metaphorically, uh, so I regret that. 
but I don't regret leaving. I think it was a good decision overall. So sometimes you can regret the how, but not the what. Here's another regret that I have, and maybe you have felt this form of regret as well, but I regret that I paid so much attention and put so much stock in writing advice. Everybody has advice. Everybody, well maybe not everybody, but most people are very generous in wanting to share their advice with you. And unfortunately, as a baby writer, I sort of internalized and absorbed way too much of it. One day I came across this writing advice that said, I think it was from Stephen King, and it said, in order to be a real writer, you must write every day, or something to that effect. And I don't know what happened, if it was like some sort of Last of Us style fungus that just sort of took over my brain, but I started to think, oh, that's what I have to do every day in order to succeed, right? And back then I thought success was a big thing that I had to sort of achieve by the time I was 25. So I, instead of taking it with a grain of salt like I really should have done, I just sort of dove into it and I immersed myself in it and I made writing a daily habit. Believing that I had to write every single day in order to be a real writer, it actually made my writing worse. And beyond that, it made me really hate being a writer because I felt like, I don't know, like I was sort of betraying some sort of ancient wisdom if I didn't, you know, honor the writing god with a daily sacrifice of a thousand words. Like, it's so, it's so stupid now that I think about it. I can't believe, but that's the thing. Okay, especially when you're young. When you're young and you're impressionable, you read these things and you think, oh, okay, well that's what famous authors like Stephen King do, so I have to do that too. You don't have to do it that way. You don't. Okay, I don't write every day anymore. Okay, I, I, I try to write often. I write when the impulse strikes me. But it's okay to not make that your whole life. Okay, maybe I'm gonna catch some heat for that. Maybe people are gonna say, well, maybe you're not a real writer. I don't care, I really don't, okay? Because write every day is bullshit advice. It's bullshit advice, guys, I'm sorry. But I think if you really wanna be a good writer, you gotta live and you gotta make mistakes. You have to take chances. You need to sort of flesh out your personality outside of the sphere of writing and then you'll be a good writer. Because I guarantee it is personal experience that informs the imagination, not the other way around. Okay, so now that I have bombarded you with all of that negativity, we can move on to my biggest win. So before I started recording, I sat down and I made a list. Well, I started to make a list of things that I considered to be wins. Uh, and I wanted it to be sort of like a, a list, a chronological list of things that I was proud of that I had accomplished. but. It ended up being a realization that my success as a writer was not defined by these large accomplishments or milestones or moments, but by little steps along the way that sort of compelled me to keep going. The day-to-day -day wins, like people reaching out saying, hey, I bought your book, I read it, I loved it. That's a win. Just having the proof, like that's a win. Being able to actually hold the finished product in your hands and be like, hey, I wrote that, that's good, I'm proud of that, that's a win. So, I think when I was younger, I thought that being a writer would be a lot more like writing awards, writing contests, Netflix deals. <laughs> okay, I still believe that. But for the most part, I wasn't really anticipating how important the little wins are even more important than the big ones because the big ones come and go for sure I mean, I, I'm not gonna be mad if someone wants to take one of my books and turn it into a TV show or movie okay so just FYI you have my permission Netflix but the day-to-day -day is so much more pedestrian and so much more kind of boring that you need the, the little ones to keep going and now we're gonna get into lessons that I've learned. I'm gonna look back on this video in 10 years from now and I'm gonna laugh at all the things I thought I knew. But how about if we just look back on the previous 10 years of my life and I will try to sum up some of the biggest lessons I've learned that way. The first lesson, and this is the biggest lesson, okay, and I almost feel like it's the only lesson that matters. 
no matter what you write, no matter whether you self-publish it, or you publish it traditionally, or you choose a more hybrid route, doesn't matter. You can't please everybody. And I've, I've struggled with that one because I am a people pleaser. And I, I like to please people. I like to, to know that they're happy or that they're comforted or whatever by something that I've said or done. Huh, but you see, pleasing people and writing are antithetical. And the reality is, one of these days you're gonna write something that's gonna piss someone off. And I have pissed people off many times with my words. And in a way, I almost think that's better. I think it's good to say something that moves people, even if it moves them away from you. Now this next lesson I sort of alluded to in the regrets portion of this video, but definitely do not be in a hurry to publish anything. I guarantee you, well, I don't want to guarantee you anything because there are no guarantees, except death and taxes. <laughs> <laughs> and the weather in Canada being completely whack. But the longer you work on something, the better it will be. And I know when you're first starting out in a story and you've got the monolith of the idea ahead of you and you can just sort of see it shrouded in the fog of obscurity, it seems like you're never going to get there. I know, I've been there, okay? And I know that once you finish a book, that temptation to just let it go and just push it away and send it off into the sphere of Amazon is so tempting. I, I know that, I've been there. It's worth it to not publish right away. And can I just say, in all honesty, there are a lot of books I'm glad I sort of pumped the brakes on and didn't publish because looking back at them, Woo! <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm glad they're not out there. I'm glad those words are still locked away in the privacy of my desk drawer. Life lesson number three, and I think some of you are really gonna like this one, okay? It's okay to write badly. In fact, you absolutely should. You should write the worst thing you've ever thought of, laugh at it, and move on, okay? And some of that bad writing is not even gonna be intentional. It's just gonna be not knowing what you wanna say, not knowing how to say it, maybe you're having a bad day. And just to prove that bad writing precedes good writing, I'm actually gonna read you guys a few lines from this absolutely atrocious attempt at a book. And feel free to laugh, because I know I will. This is actually scarier than the whole video. Oh my God. Okay, here we go. We can do this. I can do this. Once the indignant haze in Hannah's mind had cleared and she was finally able to take in her surroundings, she realized that she and Cameron were alone in the car. Where is everyone else? Around, said they had all in a transport, so they blew the plan. Cameron removed his relaxed gaze from the road to his girlfriend. You worried about what your mom will think? Hannah shut her eyes tight, shaking her head sourly. She can't stop me. I'm a woman now. <laughs> Oh, I can't continue. This is so bad. She held back and then added, and you're a man. <laughs> Last I checked. <laughs> I can't go on. You see, guys, bad writing happens. Learn to format. Or if you don't want to learn to format, get someone who's really good at formatting to format your books. Now people say, oh, appearances don't matter, and you know what, I do agree with that, to an extent. But from a purely professional standpoint, when it comes to books and formatting, especially for books that are self-published, which are already up against that stigma of being lower quality or rush published, it really does matter. Um, the formatting matters, the cover design matters, but it does take time, and you're going to make mistakes, and it's going to be really frustrating, but if you can get through it, your book will thank you, your readers will thank you. So, formatting, king. Cover design, also king. Uh, people usually decide within about four seconds whether or not they want to read your book based on its front cover. So, really put the time into doing that. And also make sure that your cover actually says something about the book itself. So there you have it, guys. 
This blog was a rundown of my biggest regrets, wins, and lessons learned as an author. As always, my name is Jess. Thanks for joining me, and I'll catch you on the next one. Bye. Thank you.